When it comes to performance and durability, nothing beats a Detroit engine. It seems that Detroit is kind of sets the standard for all the engine manufacturers. It seems like they're always a step ahead of everybody. We set that standard through our quality processes, which include comprehensive testing and measurement of every new engine. And it doesn't end when the engine ships out. We stay on top of the quality checks even hundreds of thousands of miles down the road, testing our engines after years of use in a variety of applications and duty cycles is a critical step in making sure that Detroit engines meet and exceed the highest quality standards. After two and a half years of hauling 80,000 pounds across the USA, the Detroit diesel engineering team was made aware of this CR England fleet truck that had logged 760,000 miles. Under the hood was an EPA 07 Detroit DD-15. The DD-15 just made its debut in North America in 2008 when this particular engine was built. So exactly how well is the DD-15 holding up out in the real world? The engineers at Detroit Diesel wanted to find out. So they brought this one back to their labs to put it through rigorous inspection, testing and analysis. The engine is first instrumented with fuel, temperature and pressure sensors. In the dyno chamber, it's run on alternating loads for 100 hours. Horsepower and torque curves are measured and compared against the original factory ratings. Engineering lab technician Ken Karame, with over 30 years of experience, checks the entire engine for signs of leaks. Normally you'll have soot tracking in the exhaust manifold area, or the oil pan to block joint will have oil wicking and tracking, which there is none. The flywheel housing gasket will show oil wicking and it's dry and clean. There's no road grime or anything attached to the engine. The valve covers will show oil wicking. The cylinder head covers will sometimes leak and show it. The flywheel housing is bone dry. Joint all the way around. Fuel pump, air compressor, no seal or gasket leaking. And again, the rocker cover and cam frame is bone dry, no leaking. That's the main points of leak pass, and there, there are none. It's dry. Kareem performs a soap leak test to look for escaping air, and the engine is clean. That's impressive. That's very impressive. That's it. The head is removed, as is the piston dome. All the components that I removed look like they had only 100,000 miles on them. Next up is the bearing inspection. There's no dirt scratching, no polishing, no low spots. The bearing's flawless. The pistons are inspected. Again, light normal wear. No stuck rings. Rings are all free. Nice free pin. He next inspects the connecting rods and main bearings, finding no significant wear. Light load polishing, dirt scratch. That's it. At first glance, the crankshaft looks very clean, but Kareem intends to look further and finds no witness marks, no scratching, and no wear. And the thrust bearings? Looks like they just came out of the box. The clean, high quality condition of the engine is further evident with a closer look inside of the cylinder liners and then an inspection of the upper crank bearings. This thing looks brand new, dude. There's nothing, nothing. And where the cams actually ride in the cam frame, there's no wear in that area either. The rubber seals in the head gasket are still intact with no leak paths. I haven't seen anything that would raise a red flag. Um, the motor's pretty much flawless. Three years, 760,000 miles, and this DD-15 engine still passes every test with flying colors. Dealer techs weigh in. This uh, truck here didn't even have any issues with it. It just keeps on going. The DD-15 was designed with EPA 2010 regulations in mind. Today's base engine is basically unchanged from its introduction as an EPA 07 engine. 
The main difference is that the current DD-15 delivers even better fuel economy than the EPA-07 version, up to 5% better. Uh, we're getting a lot more guys running this DD engine for the fact of uh, the fuel mileage. They're getting a lot better fuel mileage out of this engine, which, you know, that saves them a lot of money. And it's a, it's a long-lasting motor, so that saves them money in that aspect, too. Detroit engine customers demand quality this good, and they get it. And the process shown here is no isolated case. Thorough testing of engines after years of use is an essential step in our total quality processes. It helps ensure that we achieve the highest level of quality, engine after engine, year after year. That's durability. That's performance. That's Detroit. When it comes to performance and durability, nothing beats a Detroit engine. It seems that Detroit is kind of sets the standard for all the engine manufacturers. It seems like they're always a step ahead of everybody and everybody's kind of following behind them, trying to keep up with them. And it seems like they're always right up at the top. This uh, truck here didn't even have any issues with it. It just keeps on going. Uh, we're getting a lot more guys running this DD engine for the fact of uh, the fuel mileage. They're getting a lot better fuel mileage out of this engine, which you know, that saves them a lot of money. And it's a it's a long-lasting motor, so that saves them money in that aspect. We're not going to clean the engine. We're going to minimally instrument it with some fuel sensors here on the high-pressure pump for pressures and temps. And then after that, it's just going to run about 150 hours on alternating load, so power curves, brake curves, and tear the engine down and do a full analysis on it. miles here's here's what I expect to see everywhere this gasket here if you look way up in there you see the oil tracking mm -hmm. that's normally what we see around all this every joint on that mileage and that's yeah. from that that leak yeah that should be all over but it's not no everything else is clean yeah it's impressive that, very impressive that's it yeah. Normally you'll have soot tracking in the exhaust manifold area or the oil pan to block joint will have oil wicking and tracking, which there is none. The flywheel housing gasket will show oil wicking and it's dry and clean. There's no road grime or anything attached to the engine. The valve covers will show oil wicking. The cylinder head covers will sometimes leak and show it. The flywheel housing is bone dry. Joint all the way around. Fuel pump, air compressor, no seal or gasket leaking. And again, the rocker cover and cam frame is bone dry, no leaking. That's the main points of leak pass, and there, there are none. It's dry. We do a soap leak 
check on every engine we tear down. This motor has the least amount of leaks and it leaks less than any other engine has. Normally there might be 12, 14. This has maybe six or seven. And the amount of air coming past the leaks is the least I've ever seen also. And this is at 15 PSI. 15 PSI. Yeah, that's uh, lab standard. Mm -hmm. This is the cleanest motor I've ever received a tear down from the field, period. Before I sat on the bench, there's no even any carbon build up. And even on the piston dome, you can see the all the nozzle holes in the injector tips were still flowing. Mm -hmm. It's a nice pattern. You still can see all the, the hole in it. Mm -hmm. It's excellent. All the components that I removed look like they had only 100,000 miles on them. And a high mileage engine. Very high mileage engine. Mm. And this thing still looks good even more. Yeah, no broken springs, no collapse springs. Again, no buildup. Nice, clean, normal soot tracking. So far, looking at the wear on the head and cylinder kits, uh, this high mileage engine looks like it's got 100,000 miles or less on it. There's no dirt scratching, no polishing, no low spots. The, the bearing's flawless. This is thrust side. Again, light normal wear. It's actually just broken past the uh, coating on the skirt. It's not even into the uh, material of the actual skirt. No stuck rings. Rings are all free. No carbon buildup. Light polish. Typical. No wear marks, no scratching. Nice free pin. Again, normal wear. Light wear where the pin's loaded on the downstroke, compression stroke. Nothing abnormal. Hmm. Same thing on that bearing. Nothing. All right, hold on. Okay, this, this is an older design piston, and as you saw, the carbon buildup uh, put a load on it when we were trying to knock it out, and the carbon buildup is above the upper ring. So what we do now is we machine above these the upper ring groove down, make it smaller, and then on the liner side, this area where the carbon does build up, not even any water. it's not worn. <laughs> Load. This is actually Witness marks cut back on. and a ring is installed in place. So every time the piston dome comes up, it's great. You can't even see the where off, so there is no build up. The crank touched it. Usually there'll be a little wear spot in those three areas. There's nothing. How clean the actual German car. No witness marks, no scratching, no wear, just nothing on the journals. You don't have to make an engine comp. Looks like they just came out of the box. There's nothing. Not one wear spot.
Not one thrust witness mark. Nowhere. And then now uh, the upper crank bearings. This part of this engine looks like it was just assembled. And after that, everything gets washed and laid out. Another Detroit story with a happy ending. This thing looks brand new, dude. There's nothing. Nothing. Normal polishing at the top. The cross home's visible everywhere on it. Yeah, you're, uh... I just gotta watch it, because nothing's marked. Yeah. All right, as far as the camshaft, uh, there's no wear on the lobes from the rollers. And where the cams actually ride in the cam frame, there's no wear in that area either. A little polishing on the ramp off, but no wear. The rubber seals impregnated into the sandwich gasket are still intact, so there was definitely no leaks, leak paths, coolant into the cylinders, external leaks, that's why the engine was so dry. I haven't seen anything that would raise a red flag. Um, the motor's pretty much flawless at this point.